The following presentation is intended for new glider pilots learning to fly the Schweitzer model SGS-233. Always use a checklist during your inspection. When performing a pre-flight inspection, do it the same way every time. Start at the cockpit and follow through the checklist. Avoid any distractions or interruptions. When opening the canopy, be very careful for the plastic is very fragile. Check to make sure the locking mechanism works well. Make sure the cable that holds the canopy in place holds it securely and the cable that attaches to the release hinges are there and that work, being careful not to release the canopy. Next, look at the console and whatever instruments you have. This glider only has an altimeter, airspeed indicator, and vertical speed indicator. Check the release mechanism to make sure that the release opens to release the tow rope. Pull it several times. Now let's take a look at the rudder pedals and the cable that goes back to the rudder. The bolts have castellated nuts on the end of them and there's a small hole in the end of the bolts where a cotter pin goes through. Make sure that you can see the cotter pin and that its ends are bent over. Also look at the cable that's going back to the rudder and make sure that it seems to be attached properly and it's not frayed and worn out. Near the top of each rudder, where the rudder cable attaches, there's a spring. Make sure it's there and attached properly to the rudder cable and to the front of the glider. Open the spoilers and make sure that the handle moves cleanly and all the way open. Work it back and forth several times. Leave them open so that you can inspect them as you walk around the glider. Next, let's take a look at the trim. Underneath the floor, the handle is connected via a mechanism to a spring to the stick. As you move the trim back, the stick should move back. As you move the trim forward, the stick should move forward. Now, let's manipulate the controls. Let's move the stick forward and back to manipulate the elevator, and to the left and right to manipulate the ailerons. We'll also want to move it to all corners almost in a circular or square motion so that we can move all of them at the same time. While you're doing it, look at the ailerons so that you can see them moving. Check that the elevator is moving up and down as it should and then pull on the rudder cables to see that the rudder moves left and right. Now let's check the front seat seat belts. Check that they're not excessively frayed or worn and that they're attached securely. Now let's move to the rear seat. You'll check that the door opens and closes properly, the plastic is intact, and that the door latches are secure. You'll check the stick and rudder movement like we did in the front seat. Check that the release mechanism works. And check that the seat belts are secured, just like in the front seat. The next step would be to remove the rear panel so that we can look into the back and check some of the mechanisms there. The 
This is where a flashlight and screwdriver will come in handy. As we look into the rear of the plane, we'll see where the main spar of the wing attaches to the frame of the glider. There's two large bolts going through with pins in the back holding them in. Checking to see that the pins are there. We'll also see the mechanism for the ailerons going horizontally left and right and to the right side the push rod for the spoilers going up and down. We're checking to see that all the pins are in and the safety pins are in. As we look to the rear we'll see the main bolts for the rear spar and the safety pins there and also the attachment for the shoulder straps. Now that we're finished inside the cockpit, let's make sure the canopy is closed and secured and we'll start working our way around the glider. First are the main struts that are holding the wings up. There's bolts and safety pins at both ends. Now let's look at the bottom spoiler. Make sure that all the hinges are in properly and that they're secured and that it moves slightly. Look at the wings to make sure there's no damage, no popped rivets or anything that you haven't seen there before. If there are wing tip tie downs we can loosen those to make it a little bit easier to move the wing. We'll check that the small wheels and spring at the end of the wings is secure. Now let's look at the aileron. Under the aileron there are six hinges that it moves on and a push rod. As we look at the push rod we'll see a castellated nut and safety pin. There's a small observation door that we can open to look in to see the mechanism where the push rod comes through the wing from the back of the cockpit. Let's take a look to make sure it seems secure and the safety pins are in. Again, we'll see castellated nuts with safety pins or cotter pins going through them. While looking at it, we can gently move the aileron up and down to see the mechanism working. Remember to close the door and put the screws back in, being careful not to drop them. They'd be hard to find in the grass and dirt. We'll now continue our inspection with the upper surface of the wing, looking for any loose rivets or damage. If it was the winter time, we'd want to make sure there was no snow, ice, or frost on the upper surfaces of the wings. As we come to the upper spoiler box, we can look inside the observation points and see the connections with the castellated nuts, safety pins, or cotter pins on both ends of the openings. We can also flex the spoiler a little bit with our hands making sure the hinges are secure but being careful so that the spoiler doesn't snap down on our fingers. We can then look at some more of the fabric behind the cockpit and also checking for the tire inflation. As we get back to the tail of the plane again checking the fabric and we'll start looking where the cables come from the rudders and attach to the rudder.
At this point we're looking at several different things. In the lower part of the picture is one of the three bolts that hold the horizontal stabilizer and elevator to the rear end of the glider. In the center we can see the cable coming from the rudder pedal attaching to the lower surface of the rudder, checking for the pins as usual. And in the upper left part of the picture we see a round tube which is actually the stop for the rudder. So in this case as we step on the left rudder pedal and it pulls it in, it hits that tube and that's what causes it to stop. During our inspection we'll of course move the rudder in both directions to see that it uh, securely reaches the stop and of course that the cable is in good condition. At this point we can check the horizontal stabilizer to make sure that it's not damaged and then move on to the rudder to move it from stop to stop to see that it moves freely. Here we can look at the elevator. It's held on by three hinges with a cotter pin holding the hinge in. And check that it has free movement up and down, moving it gently. At this point we can see the push rod that extends out the rear of the glider attaching to the elevator. There's a bolt, castellated nut, and safety pin. The push rod is connected via cables up to the stick in the cockpit. At this point we can also see the nut on one of the three bolts that's holding the horizontal stabilizer and elevator in position. As we continue our inspection around the tail of the glider, we can look at the two small struts that are holding the horizontal stabilizer in position. They attach at the top and the bottom, just like the large struts that hold the wings on. In this case, we have Teflon locking nuts securing the bolts for the struts. They can only be used once. If you take these nuts off, they must be replaced with a brand new one. We'll continue our inspection around the tail of the glider, being careful not to damage any of the control surfaces as we handle them. As we look at the rudder, we'll examine the three bolts that hold it onto the vertical stabilizer. As we come up the left side of the glider, we examine it as we did on the right side, checking the fuselage, the upper surface of the wing, looking into the spoiler controls, and then on to the aileron. Don't forget to open the inspection cover to check the aileron linkage.
Now on to the left wing strut and under wing spoiler. We can now take another look at the wheel and the fabric on this side of the glider. We can finish up looking at the nose skid, making sure that it's secure, the rubber mounts are in position, and it's not excessively worn. This finishes our pre-flight inspection for the Schweitzer 233.